Hi, I'm Sam, it's Earth Juice, and coming up this week, binge drinking lizards, sea hares defending themselves, and extinct frogs back from the dead. People stranded in deserts have been known to survive by sipping on their own urine, but a team of scientists from Arizona State University have discovered a venomous lizard that takes this strategy to the extreme. Revealing their findings in the Journal of Experimental Biology, they studied how Gila monsters are able to survive in their desert home where little to no water is available. Drinking as much as possible during the brief rainy season, they store this fluid in their urinary bladders, and while most of us would urinate this out, the Gila monster is able to retain this fluid throughout the summer and simply reabsorb it when needed, enabling it to survive in the middle of the water-free desert. The sea hare looks nothing like a hare, in fact they're more closely related to snails, but scientists have recently revealed how these squidgy mollusks avoid being someone else's lunch. While these curious creatures are well known for squirting out opaline, a viscous fluid pretty similar to squid ink, scientists had not known exactly how it deterred would-be predators. Until now. This week, a team of scientists from Georgia State University in Atlanta, USA, revealed that this inky gloop actually works as a sensory inactivator, sticking and smothering on the sensory receptors of any would-be predators, leaving them with a sudden lack of smell that allows the sea hare to make its escape, albeit quite slowly. And finally, last week, Chris spoke to Australian scientist Professor Michael Marnie and discovered that the extinct gastric brooding frog may not be extinct for long. Can you just tell me a little bit about this frog? What makes it so unique? Oh, the gastric brooding frog is a most bizarre animal. It's the only vertebrate animal in the world that um, converts its stomach into a brood pouch. These frogs probably were the first in Australia to disappear from the chytrid fungus. So this frog went extinct around 20 years ago now. So, so what's changed? A, a scientist in Adelaide who had been working on uh, how they actually, you know, turn off their gastric secretion. He was doing that research and he had animals from the wild in a colony and um, some of those died at various times and instead of um, as most scientists do put things in alcohol to preserve them he put the carcasses in his freezer. So you have your your frozen gastric brooding frog um, what, do, what do you do then you're, you're finding a surrogate to, to, to put the cells into? So we chose a frog called the giant barred frog it goes by the wonderful scientific name of Mixophys fasciolatus. We hormonally in um, treat the females so they um, lay their eggs with a very fine micro injection needle and under a microscope, um, push the needle into the cleaned egg and inject a nucleus from the frozen cells. And the great thing is that on more than one occasion and for numerous, cell, numerous eggs, we've had our frozen nuclei injected in and the eggs start to um, divide and develop. And then the last step is once that happened and we couldn't get them past 48 hours was to uh, fix those, um, those embryos and send them to a genetic lab to test whether we had the DNA of the, of the gastric brooding frog or of our recipient egg. And um, uh, it was great excitement when we found that we actually had the DNA of the gastric brooding frog and many copies of it. Fantastic. Well, Professor, thank you very much for your time and uh, I wish you all the best for your work and maybe one of these days we will get to meet one of these tadpoles or, or, or a frog. I hope so, Chris. So I look forward to seeing a, a living gastric brooding frog. It would be really exciting. Um, so thanks very much for your time. That's this week's Juice. If you could bring any extinct species back from the dead, which would it be? Tell us in the comments below and we'll see you next time. The lives of many tortoises, turtles and crocodilians are highly linked to environmental temperature. They grow bigger when it's hotter and smaller when it's colder, allowing them to adapt to environmental change.